Hey guys, today we're in the book of Numbers chapter 18. So we left off yesterday with God selecting the staff of Aaron or the tribe of Levi to be his chosen people to lead Israel as a group of priests and servants. And so today we see um, what comes after that, right? So God chose the tribe of Levi, but with that choice comes consequences. Uh, and today we see those consequences. A lot of these things you're going to think, man, didn't we read this in Leviticus? Um, the answer is no, not really. Um, a, maybe a little, a lot of little parts that we read about, but here God is putting them together. And the whole point is why? It's because Israel's about to leave uh, the edge of the promised land. They're about to walk around in the wilderness. They'll come back to the promised land. And as they start to set up Israel, this is where this chapter becomes important. Okay. Uh, and so God is kind of putting this in now because he knows he will need it in the years to come. Uh, and so starting um, in verse one, so the Lord said to Aaron, right? Not Moses and Aaron, but to Aaron, to the high priest, to the one who was chosen to lead all the tribes of Israel as the leader of the tribe of Levi, the high priest. And he says, you and your sons and your father's house, you shall bear iniquity covered with the sanctuary and you and your sons with you shall bear iniquity covered with your priesthood. Not only were they selected to be the leaders, but they're also selected to cover um, the great accountability it is to lead God's house. Uh, we'll see this in the New Testament. Paul talks a lot about pastors uh, and elders and leaders of the church that we bear we bear a greater responsibility, therefore a greater consequence um, and could be a greater sin. Uh, than the normal person because we are leading and feeding and guiding uh, God's people. We're standing in between God and his people. And so we are held to a higher standard. And because, the, because Aaron and his descendants in the tribe of Levi are those people, God is saying, you guys better get it right um, because you will be held to a higher standard. Um, and then we see, and you will bring your brothers, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, that they may join you and minister to you. Now, remember, the whole tribe of Levi is really made up of four parts. You have Aaron and his descendants. These are the priests, right? And then you have the rest of the Levites divided up into three families, uh, and of those three families, these three families are to serve the priest and the priest are to serve God, right? So we see kind of a hierarchy. You have God, you have Aaron and his descendants, you have the three families that are in the tribe of Levi, and then you have all the rest of Israel below them. Uh, and so uh, if you're kind of wondering in today's standard, you might say you have the church, you have associate pastors, uh, you have the senior pastor, and you have God, right? So it's just kind of that I, uh, hierarchy. Um, it's not a perfect resemblance, but that kind of puts it in your, uh, in your mind how that could work out. And so, um, and so here God is bringing the tribe of Levi up with Aaron. They're just as responsible as Aaron and his descendants. The Levites are as responsible as the priests, right? So everybody in the tribe of Levi has to do a good job uh, to God's standards. And notice verse 3, he says, Lest they and you die. That's the consequence. As a leader, you're giving much, but much is required of you. And so uh, if these leaders, uh, if these priests or Levites fell, 
uh, they're they're gonna they're gonna die. God's gonna take them out, right? And so much is given, much is required. Uh, and also, we see in verse four, no outsider shall come near you. Uh, normally, when we read this term outsider, it refers to somebody outside of the people of Israel, right? The, anybody that's not a Hebrew. But in this context, it's referring to anybody who is not of the tribe of Levi, right? Remember what we learned in Leviticus. There is holy, unholy, sanctified, unsanctified, clean, and unclean. And so it was the job of the Levites and the priests to make sure nothing unclean came in contact with clean. Nothing that was unholy came in contact with unholy. And so uh, their life ultimately depended on them doing their job. And so uh, that is what uh, is happening. We see here in verse 6 that God says they are a gift to you given to the Lord um, to do the service of the tent and meeting. The Levites were a gift um, to Aaron and his descendants. There are people to help them um, to do all the things that need to be done so that they can properly serve the Lord for all of Israel. Um, and notice in verse 7, uh, you see it twice, but it says, I will give you at your priesthood as a gift. A gift, right? A gift is something that is given to you, not because you deserved it, not because you earned it, but it is a free will offering. And so they have become the priest because God has given it to them. Aaron is no special than anybody else. The descendants of Aaron is no special. The Levites are no special. This is a gift that was given by God, um, so they did not earn it or deserve it. Uh, verse 9, this shall be yours uh, of the most holy things reserved from the fire. Every offering of theirs, every grain offering, sin offering, guilt offering, you shall eat it. Um, the contribution of their gift, the wave offering. And so God goes into great detail here where we saw a little bit of it in Leviticus, but God gives great detail to the priest and to the Levites exactly what they could keep. When people would bring their offering to God and they would burn it, uh, the priests got to keep a section of that. And it's not that they were stealing from God, it's because they were working for God. And so that was their job. And so in order for them to get paid, they didn't get paid in money from doing a real job like tent making or weaving or construction. Their job was to serve God and to help Israel serve God. And so they got paid in meat in fruits, in vegetables, uh, in, um, in contribution, in Thanksgiving gifts. So there would have been uh, silver and gold, people that were bringing things to God. And God says, here's what you can do, right? Here's what you, how you can be set apart. Uh, much like today, all of your pastors at Green Acres, we're paid off of, a, off of the, off the giving and the offering, right? If we had to go out and work real jobs um, to support our families, then we could still preach and teach, but it would be at a very, very, very small level. Uh, and so uh, the church brings offerings to God, right? Tithes and offerings. You, you put money uh, into the church and a part of that money uh, goes to pay the pastor so that we can help focus uh, on the work of God and help uh, fo help focus you on the work of God. And so uh, God is just giving parameters on how all of this works out of the of all the tribes of Israel bringing everything. What could they do? They didn't want to be um, accused of stealing from God. They didn't want to be accused of um, stealing from the Israelites. So God sets these parameters uh, so that they knew what they could do and what they could not do. Um, let's see here. Um, 
God, God tells them in verse 14, every devoted thing in Israel shall be yours. Uh, so they are holy, so they can be around holy things uh, and things giving to God. They are allowed to take this. But what's the point of this? Verse 20, and the Lord said to Aaron, you shall have no inheritance in their land. Neither shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the people of Israel. And so where every Israelite had land um, in a house and a place, uh, the tribe of Levi did not. Uh, and so that was the give and the take. They get to work for the Lord, but their retirement is the Lord. They don't have a house to sell. They don't have land to sell. Um, everything. They don't have um, places to live. They have to be told where to live. They have certain cities that they can live in. Uh, and so, but God is saying, you can collect little parts from all that people do to help um, fund you and keep you and your family. Uh, to the Levites, verse 21, I've given every tithe of Israel uh, for the inheritance in return for their service. So the tithe that Israel gives was for the Levites, but we see here uh, in verse 26, it says, I have given you uh, I have given you from them and your inheritance, and you shall present a contribution from it to the Lord, a tithe of the tithe. So the the Levites, which were many, right? So if you, as you look back in numbers and you start to count through, uh, there, there would have been many, many Levites and their families, right? So they got to keep the tithe that was given to the Lord. The Lord says, it's mine, so I give it to the Levites so that they can work and support their families. But the Levites were supposed to tithe, and their tithe was the best of the best, right? Think about this. Israel brings the first fruits. They bring the best of the best to the Lord. And now all the Levites have the best of best of Israel. And now, collectively, the Levites would select the top 10% of the best of the 100% that was given to them, right? Israel gives 10%, the, their best 10%, to the Levites. Now the Levites have all of that 10%, and now they select the best of that 10% and give it to the priest, uh, which was Aaron and his descendants, a very small group of people. Uh, and so the best of the best of the best goes to the priest, and it's because the priests were closely working with uh, God. Um, and they were a small group, so they didn't need nearly as much as the Levites needed. Um, but what they did get was, of course, the best. And so you're reading all this and you're like, wow, I mean, that's a whole lot about the, the Levites and the priest. But the point of the whole matter is that God is setting up a system that everybody will look to a certain group of people to bring them, to intercede for them to God, right? So here is God who is holy. Here is Israel who is unholy. There's something in the middle. Well, that middle is the priest and the Levites. And so Israel must take care of that, those people in the middle so they can help fill the gap. They can bring the unholy to the holy and the holy to the unholy. Uh, and so we see this in the New Testament where we would say God is holy. We are unholy. Who's in the middle? Jesus, right? Jesus is that new priesthood. Uh, and so what happens that we are to, are to give our best to Jesus uh, to give our best to him so that he can connect the holy uh, and the unholy. And so we're seeing this, this image of what we'll need to support a big tribe of Israel in the Old Testament, but is pointing to Jesus in the New Testament. Hope that makes a little bit more sense, and we will see you tomorrow uh, in chapter 19. God bless.